Give us a pen. Sure. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our 7 p.m. session on the January 15th, 2019 special meeting of the City Council. I'd like to now ask the clerk to please call roll. Thank you, Mayor. Council Member it's Crone. Here. Weber. Here. Meyer. Here. Brown. Here. Matthews. Here. Vice Mayor Cumming. Here. And Mayor Watkins. Here. Thank you. So before we get started, I would like to announce that this is a special meeting and our topic this evening is to hear from applicants who applied to our various city boards and commissions. <coughs> no oral communications or discussions on other items will be heard at this time. I'd like to now open it up for public comment. Are there any members of the public who wish to comment on the advisory body interviews? Excuse me, Mayor, just a quick point of order. Somebody came with an application and evidently is not uh, registered at the address but would like to speak tonight. I don't know what the, the protocol is on that. That would be for public comment then. Please address us, you guys, in public comment. Okay. So it would be at this time that they could speak. Is that correct? At this time for public comment right now? Yes. Okay. So if there's any member who would like to speak, um, for public comment, now would be the time to speak and you'd be given two minutes. Are there anybody, is there anybody else who would like to speak on public comment? Okay. So I see two folks, is that correct? Okay, it'll be you and then after Mr. Norris. And you'll be given two minutes. Oh, thank you. My name is Alicia Cool, and I did not find out about the opportunity until after the application deadline. So I would like to request that you extend the application period in order to take my application under consideration. I've lived in Santa Cruz for 15 years on and off. I currently live in my recreational vehicle with my young children and my partner. I feel that I can truly represent a group of marginalized people who rarely get a voice in a lot of these issues. Um, I am involved in a steadily growing number of volunteer activities of my own device as well as working with groups. Personally, I donate to the Ross Camp. I'm signing up to volunteer for the Warming Shelter. I've been attending Homeless United for Friendship and Freedom meetings. And I also see to the nurture and care of my young children while living in an RV. Um, over 10 years ago, I did spend time living at the Revly Shelter. I've spent many years housed as well as employed. I have a well-rounded perspective that may complement and round out the Parks and Recreation Commissioner's community perspective. So that's what I would like to apply for. I'm well informed about current local services. I'm familiar with the services that have come and gone in the community over the years. I'm also familiar with the services that we currently have and the services that we currently need. Um, one reason for my interest in serving in the Parks and Rec Commission is that the homeless use the land and services of the Park and Recs. Um, and the Park and Recs has the main say over bathrooms and garbage disposal. These are huge issues for the homeless as well as for the rest of the community. And these are health and safety matters that as a parent of young children, I'm very concerned about. Um, I look forward to learning more details about the budgets and resources you okay. and thank you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Norris. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay. Members of the community and city council and members of the audience. Um, this is of course, these advisory commissions that they don't have a lot of direct power are important access avenues for the community to use. And I'm particularly concerned with the parks and rec. I support the applicant who just came up because as you, probably know we've been trying to get Parks and Rec to reopen bathrooms that is locked from the public except for a, a the limited exclusionary group that uses, let's say, Loudon Nelson or the people who come here during the city council meetings and at that time only can use these bathrooms. Uh, we need 24-hour bathrooms, of course. We need a whole new different mentality in this community and the, uh, the staff has been not only unresponsive, but directly repressive on these issues. What's needed is a Parks and Rec Commission that is willing to challenge the staff, to go out to the public to find out what the real needs are, not just the nervousness of some neighbors who don't like homeless people and want to put up fences, <coughs> as was recently done around the Ross camp, and seems to be the new solution for this city council, at least working through the staff. I think you need to 
essentially put people on this board that present a different perspective. I have no illusions that that perspective is going to be a majority perspective initially, but I think that it is important to have it there and to have it, if you, um, diversity is a nice catchword. I don't really care about diversity particularly. I'm particularly concerned about the interests of people who don't get represented at all. And a lot of that has to do with the public. The public does not have access to bathrooms at night except for three porta potties. And the Parks and Rec Commission through Carol Scourich and now through Tony Elliott have done absolutely nothing about this as far as I know. The excuse for this is vandalism, We've looked into this. There are very few instances of vandalism and not such as to justify what's happened. So please consider some people who will review Thank you. this Thank issue. You. Thank and you. be great if you didn't cut me off in the next few speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Everybody will be given um, two minutes. So, um, so I'll just briefly go over the approach. Um, the way that we'd like to approach the flow of this meeting is to go through the commissions alphabetically and call the names of the people who indicated that particular uh, one particular commission as their first choice if they chose multiple. And you will be invited up to the lectern to speak. And I will allow for up to two minutes. Uh, we have your application, so it's an opportunity for you to introduce yourself, so you don't need to take the full two minutes, but you'll have up to two minutes per person uh, to address the council. And if applicants wish to speak to any other commission they applied to, they would be allowed to during their two minute period um, when they're speaking to their preferred appointment. Um, once you speak, you are um, welcome to stay and listen to the other applicants, or you're also welcome to leave. Um, as I mentioned, the council members, uh, we've all received your um, applications and we've had an opportunity to review them. This is just a chance for us to get to know you and meet you here. Um, and to, for you to introduce yourself personally, amplify any types of qualifications you'd like us to understand, um, any type of relevant background information or other types of motivations. Um, but again, this meeting is uh, primarily informal, but as I said, an opportunity for us to put a face to the name as we have in your application. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I've heard from two folks in advance who've had uh, scheduling conflicts um, and I've allowed for them to, um, s to start. And so I'd like to first um, invite up Lene Holgers, I'm sorry, Lene Holgers James uh, to, to come forward. And I'm, I'm hopeful I, I pronounced your name correctly. And Mayor, before we get going, I wanna just clarify it's my understanding, well, the deadline that was announced for applications to be received was a deadline to be included in the original binder of applications. We have con continued to take applications since then, and it's my understanding that applications can continue to be submitted up until the date of our um, appointment action. Is that your understanding as well? I I don't know. I actually am unclear on that. It's been past practice. Okay, well then I'm assuming, yeah, then I would assume so, but yeah. perhaps we can get more clarity and provide it to um, the person who spoke who would like to submit their name at this time and get back to that person. And, with further, and any others who... And any yeah. others who mm -hmm. may be interested. Yeah. Thank you for that. Is that done? You have that? Okay, great. Okay, go ahead. You'll have up to two minutes. Hi, um, my name is Linnea Holters. James and I own Artisans Downtown. Um, I'm applying for the Downtown Commission and I, Downtown is the longest relationship I've had in my life. I've worked there since, I started working downtown when I was 16. Um, I also lived downtown for a decade. I lived on Lincoln Street, Elm Street, Riverside Avenue. So I, it's, it's my stomping grounds and I feel very passionate about it and I would love the chance to be a female representative on that commission. Um, I also feel like I can bring, speak to the voices of other retailers downtown and um, yeah, <laughs> I feel nervous going first. So <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm trying to think <laughs> if there's anything else super relevant, but uh, I'm like I said, I'll just reiterate my commitment to downtown and the fact that I have lived in this town my entire life. So. I'm, I'm here to stay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your interest in serving. Okay. I now now ask that Anne uh, Sim Simonian please come up. Simonson. Oh, Simonton, Simonson. pardon me. Thanks very much and welcome to the new uh, members of the city council. Congratulations. Um, 
I've worked in the movement to end violence against women and I'm commissioning, um, I'm hoping to be on the commission for the prevention of violence against women. Um, I've been working on this issue since the 1980s and helped start uh, Media Watch, which is an organization, a nonprofit here in our community that works to expose the role that media plays in teaching racism, sexism, and violence as a part of entertainment in our media and the important intersection of that and how we legitimize that violence through the media. And um, basically what we have found over the years is the importance of focusing on uh, the actions that men take and to work on trying to stop that and try to uh, you know, focus as a prevention, preventative measure to work on uh, rather than focusing so much on the survivors uh, of violence is to re rethink the whole uh, idea. And I've worked with prominent people across the nation for many years, including Jackson Katz. He has a new film out that I just saw the trailer of this morning, and I'm excited about that. It's called The Bystander Moment, and it's about uh, how we could take, all, each and every one of us take responsibility <laughs> for stopping this violence in the moment, every day, to speak up uh, and to change the paradigm. So anyway, that's uh, that's something that I would be very much uh, uh, interested in doing is working on film series and doing education, working with coaches potentially, different groups that are working with uh, young men in our community, as well as women and young girls, but um, to really consider the importance of focusing on preventing violence by going to where, uh, to the people that are actually perpetrating the violence. So. Anyway, I've been in town for 40 years. A lot of you um, may know me, but I'm really uh, happy to uh, to put my hat in the ring. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you. Anne. Thank you. Okay, so um, as I call your name, please line up to speak, and we'll first uh, do the commission um, that is, which is alphabetically, which is our arts commission. So if you please, um, I'll list the names, and if you could please line up to my left. Um, and I'm, I just want to apologize in advance if I mispronounce your name. So please <laughs> correct me and our council if that's the case. Um, so Genoa Faber is uh, our first speaker. And then we'll have Allison Garcia, John Carwin, Marilyn Cushit. Okay, thanks. Um, Jania Larinas, Sean Swain McGowan, John Rawls, Mary Tartaro, <coughs> Owen Thomas, and Maria Krisha Venegas. Venegas. Venegas, thank you. Okay, and those are the folks who uh, would like to uh, speak as uh, potential arts commissioners. Um, so please, one at a time, introduce yourself and uh, we will be given two minutes. Genoa would be our first. Not here? Allison? Okay. Honorable Mayor and Council Members, my name is Allison Garcia and I'm applying for the Arts Commission. I'm a freelance photographer and I believe you're familiar with some of my work, uh, in particular the uh, photography and interview project called Black Lives in Santa Cruz, What Matters, that hung on these uh, chamber walls for a few months through the end of last year. Uh, maybe it's intentional, but I was thinking that uh, it's appropriate to call this place the chambers. Um, like the Chambers of the Heart because it's the municipal center of our city. I believe art speaks to our hearts, and if that's true, then there are a lot of lovers in this city. Art speaks to our minds and can be very powerful. It speaks to our souls with its beauty. Public art is part of the visual culture of our city. It sends a message to its constituents, residents, visitors, and artists that we value creativity and innovation. But I also know that behind all of that beauty and magic is a lot of hard work. Not just the sweat of the artist, but for the Arts Commission, bringing significant works of art to the public means thoughtful review, thorough analysis, <coughs> ensuring inclusivity, working with city, uh, with city partners, and crunching numbers. I've had years of relevant experience as a program manager at UCSC, 
as a board member of the Homeless Garden Project, as a small business owner with clients countywide, and as a producer of an arts event now in its third year. I'm willing to roll up my sleeves to do the work from the heart to support the arts in this city. Thank you for considering my application. Thank you. Is John Carwin here? Okay. Good evening, Council. My name is John Carwin. I'm a lifelong resident of Santa Cruz, uh, except for a 15-year period where I was in Southern California with uh, earning my master's degree in museum studies. So I, fin I spent about 15 years down there uh, in the museum field, and uh, since then have uh, devoted my the rest of my career to the commercial side of the arts, which is uh, as a production manager at Bay Photo Lab. So I've had a long uh, series of different uh, responsibilities, both in public and private art institutions, managing programs and working with people, working with artists directly, <laughs> and becoming very familiar with art in all different media and uh, different ways that it can be uh, used to people's benefit. So happy to contribute that experience to any, any work that the commission does. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have Marilyn. Hi, my name is Marilyn Cooks. It's so much easier to say than to read. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I've uh, been in the Santa Cruz area for a little over 20 years. For a little well, maybe almost 25 years, I've been a full-time self-supporting artist with no trust fund subsidy, just all tenacity and hard work. It can be done, you can make a living, although they train you not, but it can't be done, it can. Uh, <clears throat> I have the requisite lists of exhibitions and I've had experience with many galleries, public art programs, public art commissions, private, so I know the world of the working artist. My work is collected all over the United States, Europe, and a little bit beyond. So the working artist side, I've really got down, I think. Um, in addition, I understand uh, working with small arts organizations. I had three terms as president and manager of the Artist Guild of San Francisco. I too can herd cats. Um, it, uh, you can also be a member of, of that organization. You just have to drive a lot up to San Francisco. So I know the small arts organization aspect. I know small business. I was an entrepreneur. I developed, owned, and operated my own small floral business and special display uh, company in San Francisco for a few years. I understand the challenges of entrepreneurs and small business. Um, I understand the challenges, the politics, uh, and managing large corporations. I worked for, uh, I started out many years ago as a project management specialist for Lockheed Missiles in Space. I moved over to the Bank of America uh, in the days when it wasn't quite so embarrassing to be associated with a bank. <laughs> and I had many positions in, in that organization, but it culminated in being the manager and senior vice president of the management services Thank Division. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for your interest in your time. Okay, I'd now like to invite up Jania. Hello, uh, my name is Janina Lorenas, and uh, I am a, a longtime artist in the city of Santa Cruz and founder of the cooperative print studio Little Giant Collective, which is opening downtown uh, next month. Uh, and the National Printmaking Movement Print Organized Protest. I'm also a volunteer for Reef Check California, an organization that does underwater ecological surveys through citizen science. As an artist and activist, I am particularly interested in the intersection of politics and art, the space that this intersection creates for community building. My artwork has been featured on the New Yorker and Guardian websites and the television series Broad City, I have also participated in First Friday events in Santa Cruz for the past eight years. At a recent Arts Commission meeting, I learned about the Storm Drain Murals Project and a draft proposal for the mural at the U2 water tank near UCSC. Both are excellent examples of projects that use art as a political intervention for greater community strength. The Storm Drain, project, the Storm, Storm Drain Murals Project collaborates with neighbors 
to create educational artwork on the environmental impact of storm drain runoff. While the draft proposal for the mural at the U2 water tank will collaborate with the Amamutsun Tribal Band and the Amamutsun Relearning Project. I spoke with arts program manager Beth Toby about these projects and was excited to hear her enthusiasm about providing greater visibility to communities like the Amamatsun. When I spoke with the chair Bennett Williamson and vice chair Louise Leong, I learned about their commitment to equity, inclusivity, and environmental justice. I believe that joining this group of committed thinkers and artists is an excellent opportunity for me to help broaden the impact of the City Arts Commission on our community. And after learning more about the commission through conversations with current members, I am extremely enthusiastic about serving the city of Santa Cruz through this commission. Thank, Thank you. you. I'd now like to invite up Sean. Hi, my name is Sean McGowan. I'm applying for the Arts Commission. Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you for giving us this opportunity. Uh, as a quick overview, I have um, several associate's degrees, a bachelor's degree in economics and art, and a master's degree in digital art and new media. I have been teaching for the past four years at the graduate division program of digital art and new media. Um, and I also work, my nine to five is a job with an artist named Jim Campbell. He is most notably known for the Salesforce Tower in San Francisco. Um, under his oversight, I've had the opportunity to oversee general production management, hardware prototyping, quality control, software development, network administration, budget oversight, and many other aspects. Needless to say, I have a lot of experience on the other side of what the Arts Commission does. Uh, honestly, I don't want to talk about my CV today. I want to talk about what brought me here. Uh, my mother is the chair of the Mingay Museum and on the board of the Coronado Historical Association and for the past 14 years has been running the Coronado Art Walk. I've had a lot of experience helping her in these various programs. I remember helping moving around post-it notes on a map to designate where different artists went in the Art Walk, helping to design a safe, and fun environment for these artists. Um, <clears throat> I've also had the privilege to commit myself to several local organizations, including one called Karma Kana, which is essentially a group of friends coming together, cooking Indian food, giving it away for free, and taking donations so that the money can go towards local organizations, including the Walnut Avenue Women's Center, Homeless Garden Project, Holistic Vets, and more. To sum up, I wanna, uh, it's my responsibility to give back to this community, and I would like nothing more than the opportunity to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'd now like to invite up John Ross. Okay. Green. Okay. Uh, Mary Tutaro. I'm Mary Tartero. I'm currently serving as vice chair of the Arts Commission, and I'm up for reappointment. I filled in for a former Arts Commissioner who left early in their term. So I'm here to express my interest in continuing to serve and going on to serve a full term. Uh, my experience in art is all my, all of my experience is in art. It's very extensive. I have a BFA in painting and drawing and an MFA in sculpture. And my work experience spans from higher education through business and uh, the nonprofit sector. I spent five years as an art therapist, 15 years as a gallery director and founder of an artist cooperative gallery, and was a curator of two different university galleries, uh, Virginia Tech and most recently San Jose State. I decided a few years back to retire early and enjoy my time in Santa Cruz, and I was looking for an opportunity that would be as rewarding as my 20 years of teaching, and I found that the Arts Commission has really been quite that. It has been, as others have mentioned, that opportunity to give back. Um, I'm done working, I'm no longer a resume building, so I'm just really looking for opportunity to commit all the full time, uh, full time that I have, um, aside from being a studio artist. Um, and I've curated a number of shows in the areas. I'm, a, I'm on the advisory board for Felix Kalpa, and I've worked with Radius and Blitzer Gallery through the Scrap Program. Um, I've been, been involved in extensively in different um, committees on the Arts Commission, starting off gathering information for the rail trail, going on to work with the Arts Council on ebb and flow, um, and then moving through commissions that I'm, uh, committees that I'm currently sering on, the Scrap Committee, the uh, Artist in Residency at the Landfill, and uh, the Mural and Graphic Traffic Committee, 
and I'm also on Sculptor. So we've got a number of things that we're working on, a number of things that I've seen that we've worked on come into being and come into fruition, which has been really rewarding. And I'm looking forward to the opportunity to continue um, with all the things that we're working on and seeing what is to come. So thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite up Owen Thomas. Evening Council. Um, my name is Owen Thomas. I organize with Students United with Runners. I'm also an art instructor at the Clarity Arts Project. So I was elated when I read the commission's statement announcing its commitment to equity, inclusivity, and environmental justice because I felt it closely aligned with my intentions in applying. Were I to be selected for the commission, I would approach my position with an awareness of the multiple purposes that art can serve in our community. It can increase material equity and institutional access for disadvantaged groups. It can open up spaces for uncomfortable and important conversations about the major divide and divides in our communities. Most fundamentally, it can be a mode of expression and empowerment. So a commission intent on the just application of artistic leadership must be cognizant of how these multiple purposes can be used to address the disadvantages and gaps in knowledge that persist and in some cases are worsening in our community. Through strategic partnerships with local organizations seeking similar ends, I believe the Arts Commission can help make Santa Cruz a model for socially just arts programming, <laughs> and I would be honored to serve this goal. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, lastly, I'd like to invite up Maria. actually go by MK. Oh, okay, well thank you for clarifying. You'll be given two minutes. The arts are a venue for storytelling. So let me tell you a little story. My name is Maria Krisha, and I come from a working class background. I'm a first generation immigrant and college graduate queer of color, and I live to fight social injustices. Lumalaban ako para sa katarungan. I believe in sharing my acquired privilege to amplify the voices of those that are not often heard. As an artist, I'm thankful for the Arts Commission. As a Santa Cruz community member, I'm excited to see and hear all the stories about to be told through art. As an activist, I encourage you to take a chance on me due to our shared values. As an artist, activist, immigrant, queer of color, I look forward to contributing to the Commission's commitment to equity, exclusivity, and environmental justice from a bottom-up perspective from my own lived experiences. Attending one of the Arts Commission meetings gave me a better understanding of the type of work they do, and I'm here even more dedicated to be part of the team, to be part of the vehicle that tells the stories here in Santa Cruz. And after having spoken many times with Beth and other commission members, I realized that this is the type of work that I would like to put my focus and commitment on. Having lived here in Santa Cruz for a little more than six years, I've learned to navigate different spaces that are not necessarily made for me or for people like me. Due to these experiences, I made a commitment to make sure that people of color, immigrants, queers, women, trans and non-binary, the working class feel included and have access to information, resources, and a community to help us feel welcome, visible, and wanted in this town. I've collaborated with many nonprofit organizations such as the Monarch Services, the MA, the Diversity Center, uh, the Santa Cruz March Organization, and the Walnut Avenue Family Center to create an avenue to move forward with our shared mission. And I wish to be appointed of the Arts Commission to continue creating vehicles. Thank you. But I'm <coughs> not. Thank you all for who um, came to express your interest in serving on um, our Arts Commission. Um, up next is the Board of Building and Fire Appeals. So I will read the list of names um, and ask that you please uh, line up to my left. So first we have Foster Anderson, Gary Fasari, William Kempf, Thomas Kern, Joseph Quigg, and Patrick Spilt. So Foster Anderson. Okay, Gary Fasari. Is it anybody whose name I read here? <laughs> you do have a late arts commission application, apparently. Oh, we already got it. FYI. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. So would that be the, did, did, did we not add her, that name to the list or? She just turned it in. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so now we'll invite up uh, the folks who are interested in the Commission for the Prevention of Violence Against Women. So uh, will Krishna Lykend Williamson uh, line up on my left? And then we'll have Brooke Newman, and we've already heard from Ann Simonton. So uh, Krishna. <coughs> Hi, my name is Krishna Lykand Williamson, and I'm applying for the uh, advisory board for the Prevention Against Women. I'm, I'm sorry, for the Prevention of Violence Against Women. Um, I've had some experience with the Walnut Avenue Center. Um, they had the uh, the Advocate Volunteer Program for um, advocates for survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault, and I did that in 2015. I feel like I've learned a lot, and I'm able to contribute to this community. I'm gonna keep this brief. That's, <laughs> I'm really nervous. Um, that's about it. Well, thank you for being here. Okay, um, Brooke Newman, two minutes. I'm gonna try to keep it brief too. Um, my name's Brooke Newman. I am currently serving as chair for the Commission of Prevention of Violence Against Women. It's a mouthful. Um, when I first came to Santa Cruz, it was actually the first job I applied to was to be the coordinator for the CAPFA. Um, I didn't get that job, but then when I saw there was an opening to be on the commission, I applied for that and um, was fortunate enough to get appointed. Um, so I've been on since 2015. I've seen a lot of transition happen on that commission um, with leadership, with um, membership, and I'd say in the past two years, we've really kind of come <coughs> together and we have interesting projects going. Um, much like Anne said, we're focused right now very much on prevention and including men in that discussion. We put together the Transforming Together Conference in October, where we are trying to bring the whole community together to have discussions on how we can prevent violence against women and not simply focus on survivors. Um, one thing that I'd like to see through is, is if I get reappointed is a needs assessment that we're conducting and we've been working with council and um, the Community Foundation of Santa Cruz and the um, Peggy and Jack Baskins Foundation to get additional funding so we can do a countywide needs assessment about what we're doing well in service provision for um, survivors and, and preventing violence against women, but also what the gaps are. And I'm also the project manager for the downtown streets team. So I've, um, in my direct service life, I see the need for women experiencing homelessness and um, see the gaps that are in services. And I've been bringing that forward to the commission as well and trying to address that, um, those issues through this commission as well. Thank you. It. Thank you, Brooke. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So now I'd like to invite up those who are seeking to serve on the downtown commission. And I will read your name and ask that you please line up to my left. <coughs> so we have Ryan Althus, Edna Brennan, Ricardo Contreras, Matt Farrell, Brett Garrett, and David Guzman. <laughs> So if you may, if you can, please uh, line up to my left. Ryan? Is Edna here? Enda, I'm sorry. Enda, pardon me. No. Thank you, council members. You know, it always blows me away when I show up here every four years and uh, listen to the folks that you guys get to put on commissions. Uh, we have incredible people that volunteer here. And I always believe, especially now that I heard all these names called, uh, that it's perfectly okay for me to not be on the downtown commission. But I will spend a minute telling you why I think I would be a good candidate. Uh, my wife and I, uh, Patrice and I, own the SWAF building where SWAF is downtown, so we are business owners downtown. I had a law office downtown for several decades here in Santa Cruz. When I come downtown every day, my wife does as well. 
uh, we recognize that the downtown of Santa Cruz is the beating heart of Santa Cruz. And it's so important that it be properly presented and represented, and that's why Patrice has been involved with AH, the American Association of Women Entrepreneurs, which is getting off the ground. Uh, the key issue for uh, downtown commission is always parking, and I don't pretend to be a parking expert, except I always know a few secret spots to park downtown. Um, so, so having said that, when I spoke to Casey Coonerty, who I uh, said that she was choosing not to reapply, um, she said, you know, it's really all about parking and there's all this stuff about financing and 10 and 20 year bonds and building projects. And um, she said, that's not my forte. And I'm not gonna pretend to you that that's my forte either, uh, but I have dealt with budgets and the millions of dollars with different organizations that I've been involved with. So <laughs> I am capable of dealing with that. Uh, I know that you have lots of opportunities for other people to appoint, so please feel free to do so. My second choice is Parks and Rec. I know the staff there. I think it's very important that Parks and Rec is now looking at <clears throat> having an ad hoc committee reporting on the homeless situation with regard to the parks, and that's largely because. Thank you, thank you thank for you. your interest in serving. Um, is Ricardo here? Uh, Matt Farrell? Uh, good evening, Mayor Watkins and council members. Um, <clears throat> I currently am finishing my first term on the downtown commission and apply, am applying for reappointment. Um, I've worked in transportation for most of my career, having worked for the city of Santa Cruz for 24 years and then for the city of San Jose for six. I have... Uh, personal uh, experience in commute modes, having ridden the Highway 17 Express for six years while I worked at the city of Santa Cruz and strong appreciation for alternatives. Um, I received my agenda today for the January commission meeting and one of the items that we'll be considering is the transportation demand <coughs> management program for the downtown. Um, for the first time in uh, the history of the downtown parking district, there is a $300,000 budget for transportation demand management. And uh, we'll be considering three options at that meeting next Thursday. I think I can make a contribution to that effort given my career experience and <clears throat> personal relationship I have with a lot of the stakeholders in downtown. And I would appreciate the opportunity to contribute to that. So uh, thank you very much for your consideration and I'll hope you will uh, support my reappointment. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to invite up Brett Garrett, please. Hi, good evening. My name is Brett Garrett, and I'm applying for either the Downtown Commission or the Transportation and Public Works Commission. I live here downtown at Walnut Commons, and I'm very passionate about transportation, climate change, and social justice issues. I'm involved with the Santa Cruz Climate Action Network, Santa Cruz PRT, and the Campaign for Sustainable Transportation. I'm keenly aware that transportation decisions and parking decisions have a huge impact on both climate change and social justice. I'm a detail-oriented analytical thinker. My background includes an applied physics degree from Caltech and a PhD in mathematics from UC San Diego. I like to think outside the box, finding creative solutions that can meet the needs of all members of the community. I look for the win-win solutions. Commission members have a tremendous opportunity for creative problem solving, and I look forward to those opportunities. Um, I believe the city of Santa Cruz has an opportunity to be a pioneer in providing better options than driving a car. It's our obligation to the climate and to the planet. We can modernize public transit to make it more accessible and enjoyable for all. I support bike-friendly and pedestrian-friendly in infrastructure. I like riding a bicycle. I love the jump bikes. I support Vision Zero for improved safety. 
I'm an advocate for expanding public transit instead of building public uh, parking garages and highway lanes. And I strongly support free transit passes for people who work downtown, or better yet, free transit service for all. And my dream is for Santa Cruz to build a solar powered transit system of convenient pod cars, providing a new way to get around town without driving a car. Personal rapid transit would be a quantum step in transit safety and convenience, in addition to being solar powered and carbon free. Let's also apply creative thinking to housing and homeless issues. People are sleeping in the streets so close to empty buildings such as the Regal Theater by the, by the river. There's gotta be a way to use those buildings as, as shelter. And there's gotta be a way to keep bathrooms open. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is David Guzman here? Okay. So um, I'd like to now invite up those who are interested in our Historic Preservation Commission. Um, if you could line up to my left, I'll start with Tracy Bliss, uh, Ross Gibson, and then David Sub... I am... Uh, forgive me. Okay, Tracy. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm Tracy Bliss. Um, uh, my third meeting as a commissioner, you appointed me in September, was in December, and I got so excited about um, hopefully being reappointed because the whole commission was unanimous that going forward, our number one priority should be public outreach and awareness. And um, I feel so strongly about this. I'm a fifth generation Santa Cruzan. Um, I was an education professor who taught history teachers. My mantra was always make history come alive. Um, but the expertise I bring to this and the reason why I feel I can, I can make a unique contribution is I write about historic preservation. Um, I recently wrote the book Santa Cruz's Seabright, thanks to Donna's help and others. Um, and in that, I focused on dozens of historic structures that are on the Historic Building Survey. Um, I'm particularly <laughs> interested in repurposing, like the wonderful example of the cannery and how fantastically that has been repurposed. Um, I'm currently writing the book on the history of Evergreen Cemetery, probably our oldest historic structure. Um, and I feel that combination of where the commission wants to go and my particular passion for writing about um, the people and the structures that are our legacy um, is just a wonderful fit for what I'd like to contribute. Thank you. Thank you. Is Ross Gibson here? <coughs> Hello, I'm Ross Gibson. I'm a Santa Cruz historian and a native of Santa Cruz, but I lived all over Northern California and then came back to uh, town to go to college and completely rediscovered my hometown uh, as a historian. It's such a wonderful thing to be a historic architectural consultant because you take anonymous buildings and put a name on it and put uh, people in it and start to rediscover things that have been before your face all these, all these years suddenly uh, take on a new significance or a new uh, uh, enlightened uh, uh, perspective. I've done a number of historic architectural consulting reports <coughs> uh, at the time of the uh, 1989 earthquake. Um, I got involved in city subcommissions uh, to help design des or develop downtown guidelines or waterfront guidelines. So uh, I love Santa Cruz and I love seeing it as a historian and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Is David here? Okay, now we'll um, hear from those who are interested in serving on the Parks and Recreation Commission. So if you can, please line up to my left as I read your name. John Bono, Justin Burks, Deborah Christie, Maggie Duncan Merrill, Ron Goodman, Jillian Greensight, Altaria, Altaria Hatton, Sky Quinn, Bill Ratto, Don Scott Norris. So first we'll hear from John. John. Thank you, Mayor Watkins, council members. Uh, my name is John Bono. I'm uh, applying for the Parks and Recreation Commission. Uh, I am uh, currently a uh, university administrator in the library at UC Santa Cruz. 
Um, in that role, I um, oversee the, the library's budget, uh, including its revenue operations. Uh, I also have oversight of uh, the library's public buildings. I've been a city resident for 18 years, and during that time, I've, I've lived uh, right across the street from University Terrace Park, where I've kind of daily um, had exposure to the kind of multitude of users in that park and the, the dedication <coughs> of uh, uh, parks and recreation staff and, and maintaining it. Um, I've um, uh, just recently attended a, a Parks Commission uh, meeting and was um, uh, most impressed by uh, the, the commission members and um, their, their clear preparation, their respect for um, the speakers and their work with city staff. I think I could, I could meet that standard and contribute in meaningful ways to the commission. And um, uh, I really see this as an extension of, of my um, volunteer service. So um, thank you for your consideration. I, I hope you'll select me. Thank you. Uh, Justin? Good evening, Honorable Mayor Watkins and fellow council members. My name is Justin Burks, and I wanted to thank you for the opportunity to showcase while, how I'd be an effective Parks and Recreation Commissioner. As a water conservation specialist for our premier water resources management agency, <laughs> I've helped uh, Santa Clara County Parks save millions of gallons of water through incentives and educational resources that are available for them uh, through the programs I manage through community workshops, um, through the dozens of community workshops that I've coordinated and held. Um, I've promoted gray water um, adoption throughout the county. And through those efforts, I strategically collected and analyzed appropriate types of qualitative and quantitative data to identify the types of barriers that preclude people from making what are ultimately cost-effective um, and sustainable landscape practices, and I think that um, that's something that I could really, an approach that I could leverage on the Parks and Rec <coughs> Commission. Um, currently, I'm partnering with the Ecology, with Ecology Action to hold <coughs> the first direct installation program to install gray water systems. This will be the first in Northern California ever, and I'm really looking forward to working with them further on that. Um, my passion and expertise goes beyond uh, water conservation, whether it's using the Riverwalk Par Parkway or a run a gulch to ride my bike or walk with my partner throughout the community. Those types of park services really link people to nature that's around us and help make impacts of climate change real. And I think that Parks and Recreation Commission uh, has a leadership opportunity to leverage that type of connection and showcase the types of services that the city has available for people. So thank, thank you, you very Justin. much. Thank you very much. Okay, Deborah, Christy. Uh, hello, my name is Deborah Christie. I am a teacher in Santa Cruz County since 1981. Um, I have been a homeowner um, at the same home uh, right up the hill from Arana Gulch uh, since 1985. Um, and uh, I have prior experience, so I'm applying for both the um, uh, Commission for the Domestic Violence, that long complicated, uh, that I should have memorized. And uh, so, um, and, the, and Parks and Rec. Um, I was a commissioner on the Women's Commission. Um, I did volunteer, I was trained and volunteered to work at the safe house uh, shelter locally. Um, uh, when I was on the Women's Commission, uh, they elected me to um, be trained with Emily's List because I wanted a future as a politician or some kind of a leader. Um, but figured that I just keep leading my students uh, until I retire soon. <laughs> I got an AAUW grant, Association for the Advancement of Women, to attend uh, UC Berkeley's post-baccalaureate certification and writing program, as well as uh, take journalism classes through UC Berkeley so that I could um, write um, from uh, multiple of women's voices. 
um, in you know uh, feature articles, and I am currently working on one in a, a nonfiction um, book right now. Um, uh, because I live right up the gulch, where if there was a fire down at the encampment on Capitola Road, it would sweep right up the hill to my home. So I've been very actively walking around a gulch, um, as well as Poganip, and talking um, to the um, wonderful folks that work for the Parks and Rec. Thank you, Debra. Thank you, thank you very you. much. Um, is Maggie Duncan Merrill here? Okay, how about Ron Goodman? Hi there, my name is Ron Goodman. I care deeply about our parks and our recreation programs. It's a big part of why I live here. As a runner, I've explored pretty much every nook of our parks and green belt. My whole family has benefited from most every aspect of our park, parks <laughs> or forks, and I wanna help them to keep improving. Let me give you a little of my background. I've served on the city's Mission Street Widening Task Force. I drafted the text of our current city's bike parking ordinance. I directed People Power's advocacy for the Arana Gulch bike path for over 10 years. I founded and directed the Run by the Sea fundraiser run, which goes through a state park, but which raised over $50,000 for the rail trail and for various bicycle projects. I've worked at UCSC's recreation program for almost three decades as a scuba instructor. And I've served on local boards such as Bike Santa Cruz County, Native Animal Rescue, and I'm also a Save Our Shores Sanctuary Steward. I strive to consider all perspectives and remain open-minded, and I'm willing to consider challenging projects. So I'll bring one up right now. For example, on segment seven of the rail trail west of Swift Street, there's an existing ad hoc trail. It's, a frequent, it's frequently used as a campsite, and I've walked the trail um, almost daily collecting hundreds of pounds of trash. And when I do, I talk to campers because I want to get to know the people who are there because they're, they're human beings and I want to know who they are. And oftentimes I've asked them, what would, what would make you want to you know, help you to take care of this place better? Because I believe that um, while homelessness isn't a crime, that doesn't mean that we should litter if we're going to be there. And so I've had conversations and they've said things like, well, how about trash cans at the intersections? Um, Seems kind of obvious, but there's problems with it. I understand that it's more complex than that. I also um, know this area because I use it as an alternate bike route because my kids and a lot of kids uh, use it to get to Pacific Collegiate School um, where the alternate ru route is Mission Street Extension, wh where this year we had an accident. Thank oh, you, that went faster. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to now invite up Jillian Greenside, please. Mayor Watkins, council members, Gillian Greenside. I've long been wanting to be on the um, Parks and Recreation Commission, and in fact, I applied many years ago, uh, Rosemary recalls that, and unfortunately, my application wasn't valid because I was not a citizen, and for many of the commissions, you have to be a citizen. Well, uh, fairly recently, I uh, applied to be a citizen, and I was accepted, so now I can apply for the commission where my heart and passion lies. Uh, when I first came to Santa Cruz and my son was small and then he grew up, you know, into six, seven, eight, nine, as they tend to, uh, we took advantage of the wonderful programs in the recreation department, not only junior guards, but the junior theatre, etc. And so I, I value that aspect of parks and recreation very deeply. Did get a bit of sticker shock recently. I'm very close to a family and they have three children interested in martial arts, too expensive. I, they've been here for 28 years. They happen to be Spanish speaking. I said, have you heard of Parks and Recreation? Never heard of it. I said, let me get a booklet. Uh, I did, and uh, the prices were so high that they couldn't afford it. I know there's scholarships, but uh, I'd be interested in making our programs perhaps better known, more accessible. I see time's running out. Um, I've helped Moms of Meter Street make the park up there safer for children. 
Um, I'm pretty well known for being an advocate for saving our big trees, and I'm proud to say that I have a good rapport with Leslie Keedy. When I uh, was a certified um, California naturalist, Leslie <coughs> asked me to lead a, a, high, a walk in um, uh, Moore Creek Uplands. That freaked me out a bit. Plants are not my specialty, but I raise that just because I think I have a good rapport. Thank you, Gillian. Thank, you, thank, thank you. you very much. I'll stop there. Um, I apologize if I don't pronounce your name correctly. Al Altaira Hatton, and forgive me. Altera. Altera. Okay, I thought I said Altera the first time, and then I thought I was wrong, so. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Can all of you see me over here? I'm kind of tucked in the corner. Thank you. Is it, is it on? Okay, great. So, hi, City Council. Um, my name is Altera Hatton. I work as a mediator. I'm completing my master's in conflict resolution. As a mediator, I excel at group communication, problem solving, and creating common ground. I see this opportunity to serve Santa Cruz as a melding of my skills and my interests. I'm an outdoor enthusiast with three dogs and an avid explorer of the uh, parks and wild spaces of my adopted home. I hike, camp, and use the bike trails. One of my dogs is a retired service dog, a Belgian Malinois, and if you know that breed, you'll know how many hours a week I spend out in your parks. <laughs> Um, I have lived around the world, including Argentina, the Caribbean, Switzerland, and the Netherlands. In every country, I've actively explored, observed um, parks, wild spaces, and trails. I often consider how different regions and countries integrate their use of urban and wild spaces, and which practices serve both best. I believe our parks are for all members of Santa Cruz County, whether they um, are housed or unhoused, and I hope to find common ground on those issues. Um, as a frequent speaker on disability access, I have presented and collaborated on the issue of city planning for pedestrian use, and this includes planning green spaces, paths, and car-free zones. So I've been thinking about the best use, traffic flows, and mingling of walkers, joggers, wheelchair users, and bicyclists for years. As a professional communications facilitator, I understand process, rules of order, and prioritization. I have served as treasurer of a national nonprofit, and I am fluent in budgets, bequeathments, and donation law. I may be a bit strange, actually, because I like reading budgets. <laughs> I currently serve on a few committees for the Unitarian Universalist Church of the Monterey Peninsula, where my wife works as a music director. I also serve on the International Finance Committee of Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. I don't foresee either of those obligations acting as a conflict of interest. As a relative newcomer to Santa Cruz, I'm excited to learn more about our city's structure, politics, and governance. I see this advisory board as a great way to get my toes wet. Lastly, as a woman with significant physical variance, I offer a perspective derived from a set of life experiences. Thank I'm you. so sorry. Thank, Thank you, you very much for applying. Thank you. I'd like to invite up Sky Quinn. Is Sky Quinn here? How about Bill Ratto? Okay. My name's Bill Ratto, and um, I'm applying for the Parks Commission because. Um, I love the parks. Um, I'm recently retired from the County of Santa Cruz. Um, for 29 years, I was the parks uh, supervisor, South County. I live in the city, uh, raised my family here, and there's some amazing people here. And that's what I love about this city. Very diverse, and uh, I'm just a grunt. So, um, you know, I know I've, I've written budgets. Um, parks are for everyone, and what we found out is that the more people that use them, the better it is for all of us. And that's how we get our funding. And um, with, with the city of Santa Cruz, parks are amazing. I've been using them all my life. I just want to be, uh, if I can help. It's um, one of those things is one of my passions in life is to um, be a volunteer. I'm a life, lifelong um, public servant. I've been um, in this line of work since I've been, <coughs> Oh, 18. I joined the Marine Corps when I was 18, so kind of, I'm from the Bay Area. Not, not, not something a lot, of pe a lot of us do. But anyway, um, I could can, I can tell you all the experience I have, but I don't want to get into that. But um, that's why I just saw the ad and I go, hey, that'd be cool. Maybe I could, be, I could help. I could be part of or uh, be um, <clears throat> proactive instead of react. And, and, and I know all the issues we have. <clears throat> But I think as, as a team, when as different departments collaborate, it's amazing that we can get stuff done. But I'm just here as a grunt, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank bye -bye. you very much.
Okay. I'll take one. And then lastly, I'll invite up Don Scott Norris. Good evening. Um, I am a 30 year resident of Santa Cruz and a retired educator um, who loves hiking and has used the parks and rec programs many times. I've worked with many populations uh, as an educator, migrant at risk, severely handicapped, gifted, and the blind. Um, I was also successful not only with students but with the parents. Uh, and believe me, if you know anything about the gifted student's parents, you will understand my comment there. Um, I, I also developed a lot of innovative curriculum. Uh, one of the things we did uh, is that I, I, we were very close to uh, Corcoran Lagoon and I developed curriculum about that and the kids would go out with their clipboards and we would do that for about a month and take readings and, and all that. So I'm very interested in bringing um, that kind of energy to the parks that, that we can do anything that we stick, you know, we put our minds to. Um, I'm noticing I'm running out of time. Um, I would like to, the parks to be safe and welcoming. Um, I believe I have many personality traits that are well suited for working on this commission. I have excellent interpersonal skills. I also have good communication skills. I think out of the box. Um, and I believe that bringing transparency and inclusion to the process always works. I believe I possess attributes and qualities necessary to do an excellent job. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Okay, so that then concludes the presentations on those interested in parks and recreation. I'd next like to invite up those who are interested in planning and serving on our planning commission. Um, if you could line up to my left, uh, beginning with Anna Marie Costa, Ren Rena Dubin, Renee Golder, Miriam Greenberg, Zav Hirschfield, Ron Pomerantz, Mark Primack, Andy Schifrin, William Schultz, and Michael Sylvie. Anna? Thank you. Hello, my name is Anna Marie Costa, and I am applying for a vacancy on the Planning Commission. I moved to Santa Cruz in July of last year when I purchased my first home. I chose to move here because Santa Cruz, to me, has everything I'd want for a place I'd like to start my family, a passionate, friendly, tight-knit community that values history and preservation, as well as the diverse views of its citizens. Because I intend to stay and start my family here, I have a vested interest in the future of this city and would welcome the opportunity to help shape it through long-term and strategic planning. I'm no stranger to the rules that govern committee meetings. I led the Student Senate as Vice President of the Student Body in my undergraduate years, and I currently sit on the Board of Directors of a federally qualified nonprofit health center where we just completed a three-year strategic plan. I have a long history of volunteering in my communities, uh, be it through coaching soccer with AYSO or helping to ensure ballots were counted appropriately at last year's local elec as el lo election clerk last year. My interest in civic involvement also led me to pursue a master's degree in public policy and administration. I'm currently halfway through the program and look forward to putting the things I've learned into practice. My professional background is in finance and accounting. I started my career at PricewaterhouseCoopers and then moved on to Google where I've been for the last five years. I've overseen the accounting for Google's office buildings construction as well as its global fleet of data centers. On a daily basis, I act as a consultant for the planners and construction teams and partner with them to ensure that all construction related activities are executed in a compliant manner and are in the company's best interest. I believe my construction accounting background, my public policy learning, and my volunteering passion make me an excellent fit for this advisory board. Uh, while I am a new member to this community, I hope to be of service to it for a long time. I'm eager to be involved in any way that I can, and I have also indicated my interest in the Arts Commission and the Commission for Protection of Violence Against Women. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Rena Dubin? Uh, Rena Dubin? No? Renee Golder? Okay. Miriam uh, Greenberg? Okay. 
Hi, good evening and thank you. Um, my name is Miriam Greenberg and I am an urban sociology professor at UC Santa Cruz. Um, and I've had a long-standing scholarly and professional interest in urban and environmental planning and policy, particularly in the area of urban sustainability with an emphasis on linking equity, ecology, and economics. Uh, I have taught classes, conducted research, published articles and books, hosted conferences in these areas. Um, I think that you know, my being up to date on literatures and best practices in uh, critical approaches to urban sustainability could be relevant to the Planning Commission, and this includes in areas such as the production and preservation of affordable housing, transit-oriented development, post-disaster redevelopment, resiliency planning and sustainable design, um, and innovative approaches to land use and planning. While I've studied national and international cases, I have also researched these issues and ideas locally and regionally, including through my course Ecometropolis, my research projects, uh, Critical Sustainabilities, and the Democratizing the Green City Conferences organized at UC Santa Cruz and New York University, um, as well as the recent No Place Like Home project with my co-PI, Steve McKay. And through that, also got to know and interview a number of people on the Planning Commission. While recognizing the considerable challenges our city and region face in a time of intensifying climate change and sea level rise, as well as a housing crisis, uh, in some ways I see these as particular to Santa Cruz, um, and in others very much linked to issues facing our region, California, and beyond. And so I see this as a unique moment of opportunity and of movement. In this regard, I'm inspired by the thoughtful and proactive efforts of our planners, council, and supervisors over decades, uh, as well as most recently, <coughs> kind of really um, uh, amplified public engagement on these issues. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, uh, is Zav here? Zav Hirschfield? No? Okay. Ron uh, Pomerantz. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council Members. I am Ron Pomerantz. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Uh, I'm a UCSC student who was fortunate enough to stay in town, raise a wonderful family as a San Jose firefighter. I've been an observer as well as active participant in many city developments. Recently, several large developments have been approved with accommodations to de developers that didn't take into account the values of our community showing marginal interest in working with effective community members and neighborhoods. The current Planning Commission reflects the belief that real estate and development interests should dominate planning. The Planning Commission must represent much broader interests, concerns, and ideas, which is why I'm requesting your appointment tonight. The Planning Commission should be a place where community values are expressed, a forum that, exp that influences the look and feel and composition of our community a place where Santa Cruz's diverse needs and interests are represented and a part of the decision-making process. I'm not an architect, I'm not an engineer, but I have some knowledge of the general plan, development issues and concerns, which include financial, social, and environmental health and neighborhood implications, as well as public benefits that, need, that must be protected. As you're aware, I'm a strong proponent of Measure O and inclusionary housing. I'm a Commissioner on the uh, Santa Cruz County Housing Authority. I've pre previously served on the Water Commission as well as Transportation Public Works Commission. <clears throat> as on those commissions, I will be open and transparent with all community members and treat everyone with dignity and respect. I will diligently and thoroughly study agenda packets. I will ask questions. I will bring community concerns. I will follow all city policies and guidelines aware that I serve at the pleasure of you, the council. I would be honored to serve on the Planning Commission. I thank you so much. Thank you, Ron. Okay, Mark, free Mark. Good evening, I'm no stranger to this room, but I did wanna come down tonight and show my appreciation and respect for the process that you have here. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Otherwise, I just wanted to make that statement. Thank you. Thank you. Andy Schifrin. Good evening, my name's Andy Schifrin. Um, thanks for the opportunity to talk to you tonight. You have my application, so I'm not gonna go through everything. I'll summarize a couple of uh, 
parts of it. I have a master's in city planning and I teach classes uh, that are called environmental <coughs> assessment. They include California, focus on the California Environmental Quality Act and the California planning law. So I'm very familiar with uh, work and have worked for many years around the land use development process in California and particularly the uh, environmental protection laws. I'm applying for the council uh, for the planning commission because of my concern uh, about the what seems to me to be a lack of a commitment on the part of the planning commission to the uh, city's inclusionary housing uh, requirements and policies. And I think it's important to have a voice on the commission that understands the policies, understands the history, and has a strong commitment to carrying out that policy of uh, requiring meaningful um, inclusion of affordable housing in all housing developments of uh, a larger size. I support multifamily housing in the downtown area. I'm concerned about multifamily housing uh, in around single family neighborhoods and in the transition area of the, uh, of the uh, tr transition areas of the city like Golf Club Drive and Ocean Street Extension. I wanna be clear about my biases. I'm gonna bring them to the commission and uh, I think that it's important <laughs> for there to be a, a, uh, a, an effective voice and I think my voice can be effective uh, for affordable housing on the commission. Since this is an interview process, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions and give you a chance to interview me. So. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. This is, our ch this is our chance to hear from you, so we'll just listen tonight. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to now invite up William Schultz. Good evening, hi, um, I'm Bill Schultz. Um, I'm applying for the Planning Commission and also the um, Historic Preservation Commission and also the Water Commission. I'm a small business owner and I've made payroll here in Santa Cruz for the, uh, for the past <coughs> 40 years or so. My company um, has built dozens of homes, uh, many restaurants, and quite a few commercial projects, uh, not only here in the city, but also in the county of Santa Cruz. I think if you were to ask around in the building community, in the business community, um, uh, ask of people that know me, I think people would probably tell you that I'm an honest and fair guy. I also pay my bills on time. I think I'm the kind of guy um, that could give you honest, unbiased advice on the projects before you. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And Micah, Sylvie. Thanks, Mayor. You got it right the second time. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for having us. Welcome, new members. My name is Micah Silvi. I am applying for the Planning Commission because I care about the city and also I think that I could be of great value to you all in that role. I'm an environmental engineer and um, <coughs> in the last 10 years or so, I've been working with the U.S. Green Building Council. It's a nonprofit that, uh, who, whose vision is that buildings, communities, and cities will revitalize and sustain um, uh, all life within a generation. Uh, it's, a, it's a very large and lofty goal, but essentially we try to, uh, our, our aim is really to sort of transform the built environment um, in any way we can. We're probably best known for our lead green building rating system. You guys may know it, it's the sort of the most dominant green building rating system in the world. But we have a number of other programs too that advance sustainability and social equity uh, goals that we have. So. Um, we have programs that look at uh, sustainable transportation, at zero waste and circular economy, at um, uh, he health and well-being within buildings, and a whole bunch of other things, including um, the microgrids and, and everything else. Um, we even have a Lead for Cities program that uh, your uh, director, planning director asked me about a few days ago. Um, but my role with that organization is to oversee the, the global certification services. And in that role, I get to talk to a lot of amazing people, but I also get to see a lot of amazing projects. Everything from a new home to a brand new city, uh, like some of the new cities that are going up in Asia these days. Um, but that's my work and uh, this is my home. And I've, I really like the opportunity to provide a little bit more back to the community that, that I love. 
Um, I'm currently on the board for New Way Homes. Hopefully you guys know that nonprofit that seeks to advance uh, housing affordability in the area. If you don't know about it, Sibley Simon will be down here talking to you about his new investment model, which is Thank you, Micah. Great. Um, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So now we will hear from those who are interested in serving on our Sister Cities Committee. I'd like to invite up Marta Beckwith, Shonda Duffy, Dennis Etler, Sarah Kalman, Andrea, Andre Kicktiv, Annabelle Tenser, and Anita Wood. Uh, Marta? Okay, thank you. We'll start with you. I'm short. <laughs> Weather adjustable. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marta Beckwith. I've lived in Santa Cruz for about 20 years, not including the four years that I was at UC Santa Cruz. Um, I'm very interested in youth issues and youth programs. I have three children, two of them in high school and one of them still in elementary school. I'm a CASA, a court-appointed special advocate working with foster youth, and I still am involved with my former foster child who's now 18 and living in Southern California. Um, I've traveled extensively, both for work and pleasure. I've managed projects in Korea, Japan, <coughs> Taiwan, the United Kingdom, and Germany. And I've traveled in uh, Central America, North America, and Europe. My husband is a Kiwi, and we've spent a great deal of time in New Zealand. I first heard about the Sister City Committee and the work that it does through my daughter, who was interested in applying to go on one of the youth programs. <coughs> it didn't work out for her, but one of her friends went on it, and we heard about the great experiences that they had. Um, I think it would be a great merger of both my interest in youth programs and my interest in travel. I think travel brings people together, and it is important to get other perspectives. If I was appointed, I would focus on the youth programs and broadening those and strengthening business and community ties between Santa Cruz and its sister cities. Thank you. Thank you. Is uh, Shonda Duffy here? Hey, Mayor Watkins and city council members, thank you for um, meeting with me tonight and providing this opportunity. Um, I've been active with the Shingu Sister City Subcommittee as a volunteer for um, about three and a half years. I've had the pleasure of traveling to um, Japan, to Shingu twice. Um, at the original behest of Cynthia Matthews, who I um, knew through Visit Santa Cruz County when I worked there before. Um, she encouraged me to apply for a homestay in Shingu and I connected with the family there. Um, was a, a, also, uh, became involved with the Sister City Subcommittee after that trip um, through preparing presentations through Visit Santa Cruz County about tourism in Santa Cruz, uh, <coughs> and then actively became involved in the city, um, Sister City Subcommittee from there thereafter. I had um, also the experience of going to Shingo the second time with the mayoral delegation um, when Cynthia Chase was mayor um, back in 2016. And I'm happy to expand to um, the other sister city programs. I'm encouraged by the, the new involvement in SESTRI, uh, the new enthusiasm with SESTRI, becoming more involved with um, the sister city program and look forward to serving on that respect as well. Um, I wanted to let you know that I, I brought updated applications. Unfortunately, I thought I had sent them to you earlier, but they didn't go through via email. So I have copies that I'll leave here with Rosemary. And thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you. Is Dennis here, Dennis Etler? Hi, and thank uh, the <coughs> council for having this opportunity to serve. Um, <clears throat> my name's Dennis Etler. I'm a retired anthropology instructor from Cabrillo College, mm -hmm. taught there for nearly 20 years. Been a resident of Santa Cruz and vicinity for the last 25 years. Um, <clears throat> I've had a lifelong interest in establishing people-to-people -people relationships. My focus uh, has uh, primarily been with China I studied Chinese as a, a graduate student uh, back in the uh, 70s, 
went on to become a chair uh, person of the U.S.-China People's Friendship Association in Milwaukee in the 70s, then went on to uh, study for my doctorate degree in anthropology at UC Berkeley uh, in the 80s and 90s, and my research was done in China. Um, I was very instrumental in establishing uh, um, exchange relationships with Chinese uh, scholars and scientists in my field of uh, study, which was paleoanthropology. Uh, subsequent to receiving my uh, doctorate, I moved to uh, Santa Cruz in the mid-90s and was at the Five Branches uh, Institute, now Five Branches University, for a period of five years before going on to Cabrillo. Uh, five Branches, as you may know, is a, <coughs> a school of traditional Chinese medicine. So I've been involved with China my entire adult life. i am also um, been quite in, uh, involved with the local chapter of the um, United Nations Association, serving on the board and now as acting president. Um, <coughs> and um, <coughs> Establishing people-to-people uh, -people relations uh, with uh, a country such as China is uh, extremely important for me. Uh, Thank you, Dennis. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, is Sarah Common here? Um, Andrew Kutif? Hello, and thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Andre Kiktov. I have been in Santa Cruz for over 20 years now, and I was with the Sister Cities Committee unofficially for about over 15 now. I have assisted in general events like cultural fairs and stuff like that, uh, but mainly I was involved with the Alushta subcommittee since I'm fluent in Russian. I have went as part of a delegation, both as a translator and as a band member to Alushta before, and since then I was acting as translator and occasionally substitute organizer and IT guy for the various Skype conferences that they had over the, and similar events over the years. I have also, prior to being in Santa Cruz, have visited Japan, and I have slight working knowledge of Japanese, so that my, and some understanding there, uh, if that will be relevant, considering the various sister cities that the committee has, and I believe that this experience would be of benefit to the committee, and I look forward to being able to help in any way I can there, should I be given the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is Annabelle Tensor here? Good evening, and thank you so much for the opportunity. I got to know about the Sisters Committee um, through my children. Both of them had the great um, and unique uh, chance to go to Shingu. And uh, Leo went uh, during the spring, and both of them had incredible experiences. And I thought that uh, thanks to Santa Cruz, my children had that opportunity, and I felt that I needed to give back. And I started being involved uh, in the subcommittees, the SES3 subcommittee, since I'm fluent in Italian. And uh, so I've been helping with uh, Luca, the council member, when he came to visit. And that was a great experience. And I'm really looking forward to uh, be on that committee. My experience, I worked at the United Nations. I was a lawyer in Geneva for a couple of years before moving to Santa Cruz. I've been uh, led to working to the United Nations through my uh, experiences with Sister City, where I grew up, it was a little town in France, and that little town had two sister cities. And by having these exchanges, that really opened a new world for me, a new world that I really uh, wanted to share with my children and hope with many other youth here in Santa Cruz. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, we have Anita Wood. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Uh, my name is Anita Wood. Uh, I am a um, new member of the Santa Cruz community. I've only been here about four years. And uh, since the time I've been here, I've been involved with 
Uh, I taught GED at the jail. I've uh, been a substitute teacher and a grant writer for various nonprofits. My profession, though, is, is an anthropologist. I'm also, also an anthropologist, and I have um, uh, I've been interested in diverse cultures or in different cultures all my life, <laughs> from the time I was a young child with uh, visitors in our home. Um, I raised a family in Flagstaff, Arizona, and <laughs> was elected to the Flagstaff City Council, for, where I served for four years. And we had a uh, sister city, Chinchib, in Taiwan, and we had a, a very enlightened uh, government, sent us there as a delegation of about 10 people. And, uh, it was, and they came to, to visit us in Flagstaff. So I, I know that, that connection, how important it is for developing uh, understanding between cultures. Uh, after raising my family, I received a PhD in anthropology at the University of Arizona and uh, received Fulbright to conduct my dissertation research in Mexico. <coughs> I studied the offshore shrimping industry, and after I graduated, I, my brother and I started a seafood processing plant in Mexico, which we operated for uh, about, about three years. Um, my, my work as an anthropologist has been quite varied. I've worked with migrant farm workers and traveled with them and lived in migrant camps. Um, I've worked with homeless adolescents in Arizona and as a, a 10 years as a grant writer and project manager on wellness projects on the U.S.-Mexican border. I'm interested in becoming more involved in the community and um, something besides kids and whatever. So thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you very much. Okay. So that then concludes uh, the Sister Cities uh, Committee interest. So next is the Transportation and Public Works Commission. Um, if you can, please line up on my left. We have Dana Bagshaw, Philip Boutel, Sean Orgel Olson, Bruce Sawhill, and Steve Schnarr. Good evening, I'm Dana Bagshaw, and um, it's great to be here before you, see new faces on the council. I've been in this spot um, several times uh, through past council uh, sessions, and mostly talking about climate change and transportation, which are my two passions. I see this being on this commission as an opportunity to get closer to the action, so to speak. Um, I'm very excited about the fact that we've just passed a climate action resolution and um, I, making it a priority in our city. Um, it's time to embrace that and, and, and mitigate climate um, change. So I think one of the ways that we can do this is through the budget. And um, I was pleased to see that that's one of the responsibilities of the commission is to go over the budget um, with the city and um, set our priorities. I mean, money t says how, you know, what we think about things. And um, so I embrace that opportunity. Um, I, uh, transportation, for me, um, well, I walk, I ride my bike, and I use the bus when I can. And I um, founded the local group of um, bus, by po bus by Choice. I did a presentation um, before you um, earlier about buses in um, Boulder, and I feel like that that would be a great model for what we can do here. We need to find ways to make busing more attractive, more viable to get people to, to find um, new ways to move people um, in a, in towards the city. Um, professionally, um, I just want to add to the things that I put on my um, um, application that um, I, towards the end of my career, Thank I, you. is that it? <laughs> you know, it's send us an email. I try to be consistent because I want to be really fair with everybody yeah, yeah. having their time. So thank okay. you, but you're welcome to reach out to us before next Tuesday. So thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you. And then um, next we have Philip Boutel. Good evening, Mayor Watkins, Vice Mayor Cummings, and Council Members. My name is Philip Boutel, and I'm here to ask that you reappoint me to serve on the Transportation and Public Works Commission for another term, my second term. I work as an engineer at UCSC, and my wife, Megan Caspers, is a math instructor at Cabrillo. We have three kids aged three, six, and 10, and I've still somehow managed to attend almost every commission meeting over the last four years. 
Um, that's somehow that means my wife, she's awesome. But um, I first volunteered to serve on this commission as a parent concerned about the safety of my kids, knowing firsthand how difficult it was for them to bike from our Seabright home to our favorite places, whether that was school at Galt Elementary, uh, downtown for a treat, or to visit her, their two grandmas who live in the house I grew up in just up the hill on Walnut Avenue. As a commissioner, I try to prioritize the needs of children and other hypothetical future cyclists and active transportation users. And by that, I mean those who don't ride a bike now, um, but they would for short trips around town if it was safer. Um, in my experience, perhaps the most difficult part of being a commissioner is navigating the relationship uh, between the commission and staff. Our role as commissioners is to advise you on projects and issues, but I find it's a fine line to walk if that advice uh, is at odds with staff recommendations. Um, and as someone in my, in my time there has, who has pushed back against staff, um, I've also been able to find that it's really finding, it's about finding a point of compromise to move forward together and recognizing that if you don't get some level of staff, staff to support, excuse me, uh, a project won't ever be successful, even if it gets commission and council votes. Um, some of the highlights of my term include creating the ATP as part of the ATP working group, action transportation plan, setting the jump bike share program, reviewing the annual CIP, measure D allocations. Um, I serve on the LRDP transportation work group at UCSC and approving, approving plans for the rail trail. But really what I'm most proud of is this last year, I was elected chair, um, a position I've really enjoyed there. And as chair, I brought Vision Zero to the commission. We spent six months working on it. And if I'm reappointed, then sometime next month, I'll come Thank back and speak to you. Thank you, Philip. Thank you both. <laughs> okay. Is Sean here? Sean? No? He already presented once. I'm sorry? He presented for Arts Commission, so. Oh, okay. Forgive me. And how about Bruce? Okay, Bruce. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, my name is Bruce Sawhill. Um, I'm an entrepreneur and scientist. Uh, my academic background, I have a doctorate in theoretical physics and an undergraduate degree in music. So playing Bach and pipe organs in cathedrals and studying the first nano, nano, nano second of the universe <laughs> clearly prepares me for transportation. Um, there must be something about Santa Cruz because there's something in the water that makes people political. I was never political at all until I came to Santa Cruz. And, uh, <laughs> since a high school class president. But uh, about the time I came here 16 years ago, I was involved in starting up a transportation company called Dayjet, which was a per seat on demand air transportation company that did short trips a few hundred miles in very small business jets, about six passengers. You, you in modern language, you'd call it Uber pool for jets. And uh, it made me think about appropriate transportation. What? is required to make transportation work and how do people choose it? And I realized it could be applied to many situations. I also learned about interacting with government. We had to change federal and state laws for Dayjet to work. Well, when I got here, somehow I got involved in acquiring the rail line and I eventually became chair of the uh, Friends of the Rail and Trail and led, led the effort to acquire the rail line, which was successful as of 2012. So um, I'm no stranger to consensus and persuasion and conflict. The rail line gives us all something to talk about at the very least. Um, so transportation unifies and divides people and the devil is in the details. And I believe that my background in negotiation, consensus building and uh, understanding the, how people make transportation choices could be very valuable. And I'd be honored to serve on the committee. You have 15 seconds left, use them wisely. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and then lastly, we have Steve Schnarr. Just to yeah. confirm, Sean, who's listed as transportation and public works, is different Sean. That he, o he, he only applied for oh, transportation oh, and public okay. works. Okay. Just to, not to confuse the two. I, I don't think Sean is here either way. <laughs> and how about Steve? Steve Schnarr? No. Okay, so lastly, we have those um, interested in serving on our Water Commission, and that would be uh, Lynn Bea, Linda Cover, and Sierra Ryan. Is Lynn here? Uh, Linda? Okay, you'll be here first. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everybody and, and welcome to all the new people. Uh, my name is Linda Cover. I'm a resident at the Tannery Arts Center. Um, I 
I look through things as an artist and an educator. I've uh, had 20 years experience as a watershed curriculum teacher uh, to students throughout Santa Cruz County as a spectra artist, uh, teaching artist. Um, I, um, because I live at the Tannery Arts Center, uh, that's, I consider that one of my resources because we have almost 300 people on site. Uh, as an artist, I'm constantly uh, speaking with lots of different people. Of my water history, um, uh, I, I, I've uh, worked with, I've spent many years in Watsonville. I've uh, worked with the Watsonville Wetlands, the Watershed Council here, Ebb and Flow Festival, uh, City of Watsonville, uh, Public Works and Utilities, as a spectra teacher. Um, uh, these are the official agencies, but I've really done a lot of work independent. I've worked with the Pajaro Art Gallery. We've put on shows to educate people about the Pajaro River at the time. Uh, and when I lived at Mount Madonna area, I managed us our small spring for our neighborhood. Uh, so I know something about the basic rural water. Um, my students, as part of my curriculum, uh, worked with uh, the Watsonville City, and we'd go in, we'd test water, we'd uh, draw pictures, we'd write poetry. Um, we would do a lot of things that would relate to our environment. Um, part of my curriculum is uh, having the kids um, do... Thank you. <gasps> okay, thank you. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> thank you. And then lastly, Sierra, Sierra Ryan. Good evening, council members. Uh, my name's Sierra Ryan. I'm here because I think I can bring a unique level of experience to the Water Commission. Through my current job, I collaborate with all of the local water agencies, um, and I'm familiar with pretty much every regional water supply and resource management program in the county. Um, my work plan includes water conservation, groundwater recharge, stormwater management, surface water quality, conjunctive use of groundwater and surface water resources, and public outreach and education, including workshops and public meetings. Um, I work with both the Santa Margarita and the Santa Cruz Mid-County Groundwater Sustainability Agencies. <coughs> Water is my career, it's also my passion. It's what I studied in school, both um, grad school and college, um, and the local rivers are where I like to spend my time. I grew up in Santa Cruz, I plan to raise my daughter here, I plan to grow old here, and I will need water to do all of those things. I try to give back to the community where I think I can do the most good. Um, I spent four years on the board of the Coastal Watershed Council, and then I took some time off to focus on my other passion, local history, and I researched and wrote a local history book, which has raised thousands of dollars for the Museum of Art and History Publications Committee, and for which I won a Nexty. Um, I did take a year off recently of my volunteering time to have a baby, uh, but now I'm back. Uh, I would love the honor of being able to volunteer my time with the Water Commission because I think the work that they do is vital. The climate is changing and we need to be prepared for it. Um, with my experience and my passion, I think I can help it to be successful. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah. Okay. So that uh, concludes the uh, opportunity for us to hear from our interested community members and serving on our commissions. I just wanna say thank you. Um, I sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your evening uh, to be here to share with us your uh, perspective and just for your overall interest in serving our community, you play a vital role. So um, I wanna let you know that on January 22nd, uh, we will be um, having a council meeting in which time we will be uh, making recommendations for our appointments. So at this time, I will adjourn the meeting. Okay, thank you. <laughs>